Hey there, YouTubers! Are you tired of the universe being too big? Are you tired of being told it will take 10 years to get to Alpha Centauri at 50% C? Then you need the Universe Scaler by Dr. Sheep Inc. Now it'll only take 10 minutes to get to Alpha Centauri at 60 miles per hour for only 10 easy payments of $19.95. Shipping and handling not included. Call 1-800-888-STARS. If you call within the next 20 minutes, you'll get a second one absolutely free. Shipping and handling not included. Warning, product does not actually shrink distances. Call 1-800-888-STARS. That's 1-800-888-STARS. Call now. Hi there, Dr. Sheep here. Welcome back to another astronomy video. Today we are redoing an old video of mine. Today we are exploring the cosmos and bring it down to a scale that we can comprehend. So our universe is so vast that the distances and sizes of these objects in it are hard to comprehend. Come along with me on an adventure through the cosmos. So before we can move on to the scale model that Phil and I set up, we have to understand some basics. So the counting number system that we humans use is called base 10. How does it work? Well, say I have some objects and I want to count them. So you count them out and you get to 10 objects. And you have to add another thing called a digit. A digit represents one order of magnitude or multiplying by 10. For example, 10 is 10 times 1. 100 is 10 times 10. 1000 is 10 times 100. 10,000 is 10 times 1000, of course. And so on and so forth, adding a digit each time and multiplying the number by 10. However, numbers can get really big, so big that writing them out in all their digits would be a waste of time and space. So we developed a thing called scientific notation. Say I have the number 22 trillion 200 billion. That's a lot of zeros. So how can we get rid of them? Well, we can move the decimal all the way to the left, just behind the first digit, counting each digit that we, that we pass. Now we have the number 2.22, which is tiny compared to the old number. But if we multiply by 10 to the 12, we add this little number called an exponent. We use exponents to represent repeated multiplication. In this case, we multiply 10 by itself 12 times. If you remember from earlier, multiplying 10 by itself adds a digit. This is how we replace our missing digits. However, Base 10 isn't the only way of counting. Computers use base 2, or binary. Binary only uses 1s and zeros. 0 is equal to 0 in base 10. 1 is equal to 1 in base 10. 1 0 is equal to 2. 1 1 is equal to 3. 1 0 0 is equal to 4. Now I could go deeper, but that's another video for another day. Why, hello there. I have my fun fact book. I'm in my fun fact chair. That means it's time for a fun fact. And today's fun fact has to deal with the opposite of from the big scale that we were doing down to the small scale. For instance, a hydrogen atom. The nucleus of a hydrogen atom is very small compared to the actual radius, well, potential radius of the atom. You see, if that pin we had earlier as the sun, which is half a millimeter in diameter, if we take that and we use it as the nucleus of the hydrogen atom, the furthest distance we can find an electron would be 100,000 times bigger than, uh, than that pin. That means we'd have a radius of 50 meters, uh, uh, sorry, a diameter of 50 meters, a radius of 25 meters. Isn't that just fascinating? Okay, now we know how to count. Yay! Now we have to understand how to measure distance. So we start with the English system. The only two units we're going to care about are feet and miles. The foot is about 30 centimeters, and there are 5,280 feet in one mile. The metric system is so easy to understand, trust me. So the smallest unit we're going to discuss is the micrometer. There are 1,000 micrometers in a millimeter. 
there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter, 100 centimeters in a meter, and a thousand meters in a kilometer. Now these units are simply too small to measure the distances in the cosmos. So we made a unit of distance called the light year. The light year is how far a photon of light can travel in a vacuum in one year. That distance is 5,878,600,000,000 miles or 9,460,700,000,000 kilometers. However, this unit still isn't far enough to measure distances to like the nearest galaxy. For that we have the parsec. The parsec is 3.261 light years. Now to derive the parsec comes from geometry. If you draw the sun and the earth like so, we know the distance between the earth and the sun on average. If we pick a spot in the sky with one arc second angle relative to the earth and the sun, the distance between the sun and the point is a parsec. Now we can move on to the scale. So this scale is much smaller than our last scale. Our last scale, the sun was 0.55 meters in diameter. This time, the sun is the sharp part of this pin, 0.5 millimeters in diameter. The nearest planet, Mercury, is 2 centimeters. Venus is 3. Earth is 5. Mars is 8 centimeters. And the Earth, pardon me, is 4.5 micrometers in diameter. Absolutely tiny. Jupiter is 27 centimeters. Saturn is half a meter. Uranus is exactly one meter. Neptune is already off the board and is 1.6 meters. Pluto is 2.1 meters. However, we're not stopping here. We have one more place to go. This is the furthest man-made object to ever travel. It's Voyager 1. Voyager 1. I've traveled so far. It's all the way down here. At 7.7 .7 meters. The sun is down there. Nothing but a speck of sand. And at this distance, you wouldn't even be able to see it. However, we're not stopping here. There's one more distance I'm going to show off. Two more, technically. Now it's time to supersize. Uh, absolutely stunning day today. Absolutely beautiful. Um, so unfortunately we had to get closer to the object that I'd like to be that we're going to point out to you on the horizon. Uh, that's purely because I thought you could see it from where we were, but I was wrong. Anyways, uh, from the sun to the object we're going to point out to you on the horizon, which is that building over there, a little pointy one, kind of a Rome, uh, dome top, that's my state capital. That is 14.9 kilometers, or 9.7 miles. Absolutely a long ways away, and that's to Alpha Centauri, I haven't mentioned that. That's the, the nearest star to the uh, Earth. Now, if we zoom back now, at the sunny horizon, it also helps us remember that Betelgeuse, the biggest star that we know of anyways, is 1,300 miles away. That's basically San Francisco, give or take 300 miles. Um, that's a long ways away, not gonna lie. Uh, and give or take 300 miles, that's about the width of my state, actually. Funny enough how that works. Yeah, but that's a long ways to Betelgeuse, the biggest star that we know of. Anyways, we have one more scale to show you, and um, yeah, let's show you that now. So here we are, the last scale I'm going to show you. This is the Earth, in this case. And we're gonna put it here where we put the sun originally on the last scale. And we're going to show reference to roughly where the moon would be. The moon is about the same size as this baseball. And if we walk down here, 6.87 meters away, we have the baseball. And that's the Earth. Interesting how even on this small scale, it's such a large distance. 
but that's what scale does. It shows us that these distances, we just see them as numbers, and when we bring them down to something that we can comprehend, we still realize that these are larger distances than we can comprehend. Anyways, I would like to thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and share. New videos every other Friday, 4.30 p.m. Central Time, and good night. Subs for trees, subs for trees, subs for trees, subs for trees. Oh, you're still here? I thought I told you to go home. Oh, you want more? I'm flattered. Check out the playlist. If you want exclusive content, check out my Instagram, doctor underscore sheep underscore YouTube. That's all lowercase. If you want to help the earth, subscribe. When I reach 100 subscribers, I'm going to plant 10 trees. If you feel that's too small, then check out my channel tour where I lay out even bigger goals. Finally, stick around for the next 20 seconds and give me that sweet watch time. Bye.